Good morning, folks. We've got some outstanding science articles to hit today on pre-seismic signals, including from the sun and solar forcing of the terrestrial condition. But we have a bit of space weather that happened yesterday, so let's start there with the last 24 hours on our star. Once again, there was not much in the way of solar flaring and eruptive activity, but there had been a small filament eruption four days ago, and models had suggested there was a chance for a glancing blow impact over the weekend. It struck yesterday. The impact was not big, actually barely noticeable at first, but the wake of the CME produced much more than expected. While the speed of the solar wind never reached high levels, there was significant density to the plasma, which largely coupled with Earth's magnetic field due to the solar wind BY, the interplanetary magnetic field direction, causing a brief but significant deviation spike on the magnetometers. The geomagnetic storm varied into the low and moderate range for about nine hours and provided a considerable amount of disruption from the baseline condition. Luckily, it had only modest impact on the ground below, with induction focused almost entirely on the auroral oval region at high latitude, far more polar coupling than anything else, and the event is waning here this morning. Looking ahead, we don't have any scary sunspots. We will be monitoring their development in case of complex morphology, but we are also monitoring the plasma filament activity at the south end coming on the left. You can see it's fairly active there already, and there are several large plasma ropes in the region. Eruptive potential is rising as we enter the new week here. Took a fairly good-sized earthquake yesterday, but luckily it was far from populated areas well south of Australia and New Zealand, 6.7, interestingly coincident with the start of the geomagnetic storm. And speaking of earthquakes, got some new pre-seismic signals here. Stratospheric temperature and radio emission has not been identified before as a pre-seismic signal, but it showed up here. This should be investigated further as it may provide an even easier to identify signal and atmospheric electricity as we normally do. And our second paper is more in that electric line and what we're used to. This time it's the equatorial ionization anomaly giving away the earthquake before it occurs. And with all of the electromagnetic aspects of seismic activity, it's no wonder dozens of previous studies have shown a link with solar activity. This preprint will hopefully make it through peer review and be the next article suggesting that the sun triggers big earthquakes. They're focused on solar flare energy here. Hopefully you caught last night's special video on long-term solar forcing. It is the setup for tonight's special video, which will be on the short-term forcing. Check this one out if you missed it and come back tonight for part two. And speaking of which, what a great paper here on thermospheric winds during geomagnetic storms. Remember, anything that impacts the ionospheric region is going to impact the global electric circuit in the atmosphere below, whether that's solar flares, proton events, or geomagnetic excitement as was the case here. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.